<laughs> All right, we're live. We're live? We're live. Uh, I missed it. Oh, okay. Sure. Okay, well, welcome everybody who is gathered here. Thank you for being so respectful. I have to say, I assume that the left wing counter demonstration, well, I don't know. I don't want to assume you're left wing. I don't want to make any assumptions. Well, the counter demonstration, I assumed, was here to disrupt. But if you're here to listen, I will tell you my tale. I will give you my speech. And we should have a, a fun evening. Um, so we're live here on Periscope. How are we doing on numbers? We have a lot of people watching. Uh, we got 200 right now. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I want to do before I get into my uh, actual written speech here is I want to go through this article. I think it's just fascinating to point out some of this stuff, just clear up some misconceptions. Can you please introduce yourself? Sure, sure. So for people that don't know, for the counter demonstrators, my name is Nicholas J. Fuentes. I host a political podcast called America First, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. <coughs> Central. You can check it out. We'll be back tomorrow. Uh, is that good on an introduction? Okay. Um, so I just want to clear up some things because I assume if you're asking me for an introduction, then probably a lot of the counter demonstrators haven't heard of me before today. Am I right in my assumption on this? How about no. you go right into your speech? Yeah, okay. Thank you. Okay. So. <laughs> So, in, in this article here, it says, uh, it says, white nationalist Nicholas Fuentes likely coming to Iowa State Wednesday, sources say. In the first paragraph here, it says, uh, Nicholas Fuentes, host of America First, who has said he could be accurately described as a white nationalist, as he is both white and a nationalist. So, where they derive this allegation is in a live stream, somebody said, are you a white nationalist? I said, well, I am a nationalist who happens to be white. And of course, these are different things. If you don't believe me, I'll explain. A white nationalist believes that the United States should be an all-white country. And how do you achieve that in a country that is not all-white? Well, violence and other things, that is not what I believe. You know, and people have said, oh, Nick Fuentes believes in an ethno state. He's a white. I have never subscribed to that ideology. I said, I am a nationalist who happens to be white. And that's how they concoct this libel. Now, they later say in the article, yeah, so what is your version of what's what's what, Oh, so I, I'm a nationalist as opposed to a, a white nationalist. And as a nationalist, I simply believe that the interests of American citizens should be put first. I volunteered for the Trump campaign. I know a lot of people aren't <laughs> happy with this, certainly. But uh, on, on the issues... On the issues of trade, for example, we look at trade, we have something like a $700 billion trade deficit with China. Every year, we're sending $700 billion worth of assets, debt, and currency to China. And what they do with this money, uh, you know, they're, they're basically sucking out the wealth of the country, sucking out the manufacturing base, the industrial base, the currency that they take in, they distribute at strategic times to manipulate the exchange rate so that they can keep this going. And this is just one example where I believe that trade practices should benefit American workers as opposed to other people. So that's, that's my definition of a nationalist. Now, the article goes on to say that I was uh, on a live stream with neo-Nazi Richard Spencer, and they, they try to associate me with this character. Now, if anybody is familiar with my work or who I am, I've been feuding with Richard Spencer for years. He called me up on the phone, I think it was last January, late at night, drunk, to tell me that I was a spick, to tell me <laughs> that my parents are housekeepers and all this other stuff. So we don't get along. I don't think that's mentioned in this article. And I'll, I'll save you. A lot of everything in this article is garbage. It should be taken with a grain of salt. But I'll, I'll begin my speech here. My speech. Hey, we already established we need to be respectful. He already thinks we're going to be disrespectful. Please just let this man talk. That's not us. That's not us. That's not us. That's not us. Okay. So, so to get to... That's the thing, is that no way. Way. <laughs> <laughs> In order to count him, we got to know where he's standing. You're right. Of course, I'll have a common sense. I can read him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. Say 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 I, I will take right, questions guys. after the speech. Well, come on. So, the, the speech is not about this article. The speech is actually about immigration. And <clears throat> I will tell you at the outset that this speech was not designed to be given for, uh, uh, you know, an audience of left-wing and right-wing people. This speech was designed for college Republicans. And what is going on within the college Republican scene, what's going on in the right wing, what's going on in the White House... Is that who invited you? Who? Can, can, can we just, can we just deal with this at the end, please? Honestly. Okay. So, there is something going on in the college Republican movement. You may be familiar with Charlie Kirk. 
Charlie Kirk says that the number one threat facing this country is socialism. I disagree. I disagree wholeheartedly. I am not a free market zealot. I am not a market fundamentalist. I'm sure we could probably find common ground on a lot of issues if there are left-wing people in the audience. The number one issue of our time in the United States and in the Western world is not socialism, is not economic systems. The number one issue of our time, whether you think it's good or bad, is mass migration. What defines, okay, what defines the 21st century when we have globalization, when we have liberalization of markets, is the massive movements of people. We see this in Europe. You have all kinds of people. This started, I believe, in the Arab Spring with the Syrian Civil War in 2011. Massive amounts of Arabs and North Africans moving to Europe. This has been going on in America since about 1965 with the Immigration Act, the Hard Seller Act, of South Central Americans and Mexicans moving into the country. And so regardless of what your feelings are on this issue, this is the defining issue of our time, is the demographic change going on in the country. Now, some people think <laughs> that's charming. Some people believe that the demographic change is a good thing. Some people think it's a bad thing. Some people are just analyzing it. I will try to analyze it for you tonight. So we're going to start with uh, some of the numbers here. So just to give you an idea, since 1965, this was the Hart Seller Act. 59 million legal immigrants have come into the United States. Now, obviously, we have a country of about 314 million people right now, so that's quite a substantial number. We're talking about a lot of people. Additionally, they are talking about, politicians have discussed, and uh, different pollsters have projected that there will be 23 million more immigrants brought into the country by 2065. So we'll have this massive foreign-born population, and what we see is that the demographic effect on the country is that the proportion of the former white majority will drop precipitously from 90% in 1965 down to less than 50% by 2042. And we're sitting here wondering what are going to be the effects of this. Now, the first effect is going to be political. If you're a white or if you're a right-wing person, this is a bad thing. If you're a left-wing person, this is a good thing. We find that in this country today, party politics is polarized along racial lines. Everybody understands this. I think a lot of Republicans are unwilling to admit this. I'm perfectly willing to admit this. We saw that 57% of white people voted for Donald Trump in the last election. We saw that majorities of all non-white races and ethnic groups voted for Hillary Clinton. It was 90% of blacks who voted for Hillary Clinton, 66% of Hispanics, 65% of Asians voted for Democrats. And so if you're a Republican, whether you think it's great for the economy, whether you think it's great morally to bring in all these immigrants who are predominantly non-white, they're Asian or Latin American, politically it is a disaster for Republicans. We see this in Texas. Texas was competitive in 2018 and it was competitive because of immigration. Arizona has become a purple state. This was the state of Barry Goldwater in 1964, I believe it was, and he was a radical Republican. Now it's a purple state. And so we're seeing across the American Southwest, we're seeing even in the Southeast, even in some of the great cities in the north immigration is redefining political parties and this is not as elastic as people might think it is a lot of people assume that if you get different people in the country this doesn't really match country i think it was in 1920 with the 19th amendment people would assume if everybody is equal all things being equal more people getting the franchise should not change how voting commences what people vote for but we found that states who legalize the right to vote immediate generations of women voting they went up by 28 percent and so we see a direct correlation between different people getting the franchise and changes in policy and so as a result we see that new immigrants coming in are going to change the policies. They're gonna vote for different things, different politicians. And I'll just read through a couple of percentages here. We look at gun rights. Gun rights are very important to conservatives. 55%, uh, yes, 55% of white people believe that gun rights are more important, that that should be the tone of the country rather than gun control. However, we look at uh, black people, 25% of blacks say that it should be gun rights over gun control. In other words, it's an overwhelming majority of blacks who support gun control. If we look at Hispanics, 28%. Is, is that offensive? Uh, are you guys Black Lives Matter? Okay. What does that have to do with anything, whether the Black Lives Matter or not? All right, all right, all right. Hey, fair enough, fair enough. But it's all right. You assume because we are black that everyone's Black Lives Matter? 
But at the same time, no, no. I'm, I'm saying if if so, you identify as so Black Lives Matter, how could you find Black? Not, I, I'll just I'll just, use, I'll, so so I'll just use African American. Very well, very well. For for the sake of expediency, for the sake of expediency, I will I will use African American. You need to not generalize thinking that just because we're black, we're part of Black Lives Matter. Yeah, that's not. Well, aren't some of you are some of you a part of Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter is not a. What does that have to do with the <laughs> All right, fair enough, term. fair enough. Hey, I'll refer give one respect, but don't give respect. I will I will not do it to any other people. Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely. So so African Americans better. Twenty-five percent support gun rights over gun control. Hispanics is twenty-eight percent support gun rights over gun control. So we can see on this one issue, which is fundamental to, to the country, this is the Second Amendment of our Constitution. You see that there is a great divergence between non-whites and whites. This matters when the demographics are changing. It's not just gun rights; it's free speech. The First Amendment, as we are here to exercise today, here at uh, the Tree of Oppression, I believe it's called, the free speech zone on campus, something that we cherish as Americans, we find that 38% of non-whites believe that hate speech should be incorporated into the First Amendment versus only 23% for whites. So it's nearly double the amount of non-whites versus whites that support hate speech legislation. Now, whether you agree with that or not, that is a remarkable change of what the Constitution used to represent. And lastly, lastly, we look at the Constitution. If you are a civic nationalist and you believe that race, ethnicity, gender, all of these things are interchangeable, all of these things are totally replaceable, we're all pink on the inside, what is the enduring uh, sense of American identity? What is the enduring fixture of American identity without race, without ethnicity, without culture, without religion? It is the social contract. It is the Constitution. It is the American creed. And when we look at the perspective on how the Constitution should be interpreted, we find that 33% of African Americans believe that the Constitution should be interpreted according to modern times. I, I'm, I'm sorry, did I say it in a way that's disrespectful? Okay, 34% 34, 34 of Hispanics believe that the Constitution should be interpreted according to a contemporary interpretation versus 51% of whites who believe that it should be interpreted according to its original intent. And so what we find, again, whether you agree or disagree on any of these issues, we find that the country politically is polarizing along racial lines, white versus non-white, on gun rights, on free speech, on the Constitution, and on other issues. Now, secondly, we look at the economic effect of immigration, okay? And we find that there are a lot of arguments in favor of immigration because immigrants contribute to the economy. Republicans are maybe the biggest offenders when it comes to this argument. They'll say so long as immigrants are coming here and they're working hard and they're starting businesses and they're entrepreneurs, bring in as many as possible. Donald Trump at the State of the Union and at CPAC said we want more legal immigrants than ever. I'm not in favor of that. And it's because of the economics of it. And I'll say at the outset, and this is something that might interest some of the counter demonstrators, you find that the number one, the group most affected, adversely affected by immigration in the labor market is African Americans. Number two is recently naturalized legal immigrants. So when we're talking about legal immigrants coming here and taking jobs and hurting the economy, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about the people in the college Republicans. I'm not talking about the constituency of Donald Trump. I'm actually talking about the constituency of the Democratic Party. But we find that at the outset, to me, what is most scandalous about the economic argument is, is think of this. In the next 30 to 50 years, you will see automation take over the country. Retail jobs, factory jobs, agricultural jobs, a lot of low-skilled work is basically going to be, it's going to be gone, okay? It'll become an anachronism in the 21st century. All these people are going to be out of a job. Low-skilled people. The problem is capitalism, not some bullshit race war that I'm not a capitalist, okay? I'm not a free market guy, but anyway. Any, I'm a distributist, but anyway. But, okay, dude. We don't like those people. We don't like those people. We don't like those people. We don't like those people either, dude. You're worried about your quote unquote economics. You're worried about the power of your white man. Yeah! Okay, so I thought we were going to save the QA until the end. You could keep going. Go. All right, all right.
So we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to that at the Q and A. But anyway, thank you, thank you. Oh, we're, we're almost we're almost done. We're almost done. Thank you. I appreciate that. So so the point the the point here to simplify it is this. The immigrants that have been brought over here since 1965 are low-skilled immigrants. Low-skilled jobs are going away. It does not make sense to import people who do not have an economic fit in the country, will not have a job waiting for them in the country. It's a bad idea. Now, next off, next off, we look at the impact of immigrants on the gross domestic product. For people that don't know, the GDP, the gross domestic product, is the value of all the goods in the country uh, produced in a given year. We find that immigrants contribute $2.1 trillion to the GDP in the long run since 1965. $2.1 trillion they've contributed to the GDP. But we find that at the same time, $2.05 trillion of that 2.1, the benefits of that GDP growth accrue <coughs> to the immigrants themselves. So we find that on net, immigration basically, if we're looking at GDP, does not impact the economy. It does not benefit, it does not take away. Now that is, now that is just looking at GDP, but GDP is only one part of the puzzle. If we look at the fiscal cost of immigration, again, this is according to Borjas, an immigrant himself, the number one immigration economist in the country from Princeton, he says that the long-term fiscal cost of each individual immigrant is $119,000 over the long term. So even though, if we look at simply GDP, immigration on net does not benefit or cost, if we factor in the fiscal cost of immigration, it is a net loss, it is a net drain. And it's not hard to see why, if we look at welfare statistics as a good example, 45.8% 45.8% of immigrant households receive some form of welfare compared to 27.4% of native households. With Hispanic immigrant households, it's 62% Is that are legal receiving or illegal? Some form of welfare. That's legal. That's legal. That's legal. That's legal. That's legal. I am. I'm 14% native, actually. Wow. <laughs> I don't understand what they want. All right, all right, all right. We've got, we've got. Please, please, stay, stay with me. Stay with me. We've got, we've got a little bit left to go here. So, so this is this is the last point. This is the last. Uh, the last body point of the speech here, if you will. So you've covered the political reasons, we've covered the economic reasons, but the most important, the most fundamental point to look at is the culture, of course. Now, this is something that, uh, yes, yes, the culture, how immigration impacts the culture of the United States. Okay, which culture? Culture? No, let me culture. Let me let <laughs> they can't control themselves. They cannot help themselves but to, I'm sorry, but to cry me off the culture. out. But to cry out. All right, y'all. Yo, let him finish. Thank you. So many people, when we look at immigration, they will consider the political consequences. They will consider the economic consequences, but never considered are the cultural consequences. And this is fundamental. What do we consider the United States of America to be? Is the United States of America geographic boundaries? Is the United States of America the sovereign government in Washington, D.C.? What is the United States? Is it the people? Is it the Constitution? This is the fundamental question. If we are to transform the country demographically over a period of 100 years to go from a country that was 90% white Anglo-Saxon Protestant to a country that is racially different, you find that the United States has changed. You find that whether you like the new country or you don't like the country, the United States of America in 19, or rather in 2065 is not the America of 1965. Some people. Segregation was over. I'm sorry. No, let me go. You can Wow. We're, we are seeing some of the cultural differences on display right now. It's actually, <laughs> it's actually quite instructive. It is actually, it is actually quite instructive. But we look at. You're gonna love. Wait, wait. You're gonna love this point. Okay. You're gonna love. You're gonna love this. I promise. I promise. Okay. Okay. T take a look at the country now. 
When we look at a city like Chicago, I am from. <laughs> you're gonna love this. You're gonna love this. I am from. I am from the suburbs of Chicago. Yeah. Right. I can't tell you. I don't want you to show it to my doorstep. The city of Chicago is a violent city. Okay. You look at. Okay, where the shooting rate is 430 in McKinley Park. How many of those? The shooting rate is 430. This is this is this is the size of the point. This is the size of the point. We look at the city of Chicago or the city of Detroit, and we hear from people like Charlie Kirk. What is the explanation for the current condition of Detroit, Chicago, Baltimore? They say the cause of their plight is democratic policies. This is what Charlie Kirk says. They say what is wrong with Detroit, what is wrong with Baltimore, is that these cities are run by Democrats. Well, I think it's an interesting thought experiment because I know of another city which is run by Democrats, a little city called Burlington, Vermont. Now, do we see the same problems plaguing Burlington, Vermont? that we see plaguing Baltimore, Chicago, Detroit. They're all run by Democrats, but what's the difference? The difference is demographics. Now, I'll ask you, <laughs> I'll ask you this. I'll ask you this, I'll ask you this. No, what are you trying to say, finish? Hey, chill out, your racism showing. Detroit, Detroit bears a strong resemblance to Haiti. To Sub-Saharan Africa, more of a resemblance, more of a resemblance than it does. What I mean to say by that is when I will say exactly what I mean. When people, when people come, I'm not insulting you. I'm not insulting you at all. I'm not insulting you. I'm one percent African. How can I? I'm only joking. 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 I'm only Okay, the point is that when we see different people come into the country, who are the different people? The different people are Hispanics, they are black, they are Africans, Asians, correct. They import their economic destiny. That is the point. The economic destiny of the East Asian, for example. What is I, is this? Are they part of the group? I, oh, I, it's hard because that group over there. What is the economic destiny? All right, all right. What is the economic destiny? The economic destiny of uh, of African Americans in the country is no different than Africans anywhere else in the world. What is it? What it is poverty. Our destiny. It is. It is simply. I'm saying that as a group, we tend to see some bad So you're saying that all black people are destined to be No, no, that's not Oh, you simply, you misunderstand. Guys, it's almost done. Let it Hey, 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 hey. Bro, y'all can't expect y'all can't expect someone not to say shit when you say shit. Y'all do what y'all can't. Next. 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 Wrap it up. Try to get some few names. All right. All right. All right. Okay, I, I will. I will wrap so this up. Well, I will wrap this up, and then I, I will explain okay. it after I wrap okay. up the speech, okay. and then we'll take a Q and A. Okay. So, so the last. So I had to get closer. To, to conclude the last point, I will close with a quote by Patrick J. Buchanan, a great patriot, and this quote I think uh, will mean something to you. He says that race is not everything. So true. To you. However, race is not nothing. And as we change the country, 
racially, ethnically, in a word, demographically, we are going to see that we will get a different country. We bring in different people, we will get a different country. A country. And to conclude, for the college Republicans, for the Turning Point people, if we wish to preserve a texture of life, which we cherish, the texture of life of our ancestors, What's the we texture? have to bring an end ancestors. to Don't mass it, immigration. Don't What's the texture? Speech. That's Don't my speech. The texture of life is European culture. And what, what would you would you elaborate on that, please? We're gonna have to take we're gonna have to take a question one at a time. We're gonna have to go one at a time. You you said that you said that the problem with our country is mass immigration. You said the problem with the country's mass immigration is that legal or illegal? Both. Okay. So mass immigration. You went from mass immigration to discrimination. You went to breaking down the country into oh, Africans are that's it. So I don't understand. You said you said the problem with our country. You you started off with mass immigration. You went from mass immigration to talking about diversity. Correct. You went from diversity to saying that black people are the problem. I didn't say black people are the problem. You said we're just in for I didn't say you were well. What you I said, said was black people have the same. You said black people have the same. Let me clarify. Allow me to clarify. Do you know any African? Certainly myself. I consider myself an I don't know if they're in the poverty You don't know. So why are you, where are you getting that, that, that statement from? What do you what? mean? Well, I know you, the state, the question was, do I know any African American? No, I'm asking you, where did you get the statement of that, the poverty, that, the poverty? African Americans are that. Where did you, where did you oh, pick that up oh, at? Well, you just simply look at the patterns. Okay. You simply patterns, look at the patterns. I'm okay. Because of white like, 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 We're at, oh, we're at a PWI and we're not. None of us seem like we're in poverty. Yeah, so how do you where are you getting this from? You say that African Americans around you are they in poverty? I'm talking about Are they in poverty? Are you in poverty? No, are no. Are, they, are your no, friends? No. Oh, are your oh, no, friends? No, 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 they're, they're not. not in poverty. So but where how do you? I have a, how because do you know this? The, if you no, look at no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. But how do you know this? You just told me you don't know their status. How do you know they're not in poverty? You just told me. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. So you don't know. You don't know. Is that what you're saying? All right, I think we're done. So you don't know. If you're going to be rude, if you're going to pile up, we have to take it. She has a question. This is this is next thing. Well, afterwards, hey, if you're watching this live stream, he's a racist, and if you support him, you're a racist too. So everybody in the comments, just think about that. Think about the white terms he does in this country, and don't listen to this. So I have a question. That's what I gotta say. You should end the live stream. Why does that appear to you that you are one day going to Come on, to do your civic duty. Do you support this guy? It is no, appearing I'm to me because if you look at the fertility rates of white what's people, your freedom of speech? Uh, I'm just calling you. Serious be quiet, be quiet. And the fertility rate is, is declining below the place. And so I, why I is that a fear? No, that's not an answer. No, 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 if, if, if they were going in state, that would you would find that problematic, would you not? Everyone else has a cell phone. You're not going in state. You can put your live stream down. And in, what in what area? In what area are you going in state? Globally? Globally? In the United States, everywhere. Is it, everywhere is it globally? Where did you get that fact at? You look at the fertility rate. Where did you get that fact at? Where did you get the fact at? You look at the United Nations statistics on this. Where where are these facts coming from? What's the source? You the HTTP. I would love like that. I don't That's have a I'm website asking. off the top of my head, but this is well established. So, okay, so what? The fertility what? rates of Western nations are below the So, what organization has proven that? The national governments of these countries.
different countries. Have Which countries are? Because you you named you named. But the thing is, is you didn't you name countries. You named continents. So I'm asking you: Are you looking at specific countries, or are you looking at specific? Okay. All European countries. All of them. Yes. And so you looked at every single one of them, correct? And then you looked at North America, or did you look at the United States? Okay. Canada, both. But what about? Mexico. Well, Mexico is not white. Okay, but are there not white people in Mexico? Okay, so what? So North America. But the white people in Mexico are a minority. Okay. Why are so? I'm asking you. We we I believe that white people, at least in Europe, should have their own nations. Okay. In the United States, it's a, it's a different story. And how do you plan on getting those? Well, in Europe, they're going to have to deport a lot of people. To where? To their own countries. So where are the countries back at? Back to Africa, back to the Middle East. They're going to so what about what about Spaniards? What about Spaniards? What about Spaniards? The Spaniards. They're going to go back to Spain, correct? What Spaniards? The ones from Spain. No, but where? Because I where think you're they? forgetting the ones in Europe. The Spaniards that are in Europe. Sure. That has, so they're going to go back to to where? To Spain. What are you? What are you talking about? What, I, what I'm you, having a lot of serious? trouble understanding okay, what you're so, saying. Okay, so back in history class, you would have learned that people originate the Hispanic and Latin populations originated from Spain. And then they migrated to America with your Oh, oh, oh no, no, so no, that's, that's incorrect. I'm asking, that's incorrect. I'm asking you. The United States is not founded by Spaniards. Do you think that? I didn't know. The I'm, United States was founded by I Protestants. I didn't say they were founded. I said they came over with Europeans. Oh, certainly. Because certainly. it's proven that no, Spaniards no, no. were over here. We are uh, talking about Europe. We're no, I'm about speaking Europe. about Spaniards. Yeah, no, That's what I'm asking back. about. In Europe, the Africans and Middle East are going to have to go back. In Europe. Okay, okay. Wait, yeah. here in America? No, in Europe. She has a question. Sure. She has a question. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so your whole speech, you were saying that the issue with America right now is massive, massive immigration, right? Correct. Okay, and you're saying like all these jobs for like low skill labor people are going to be obsolete and all that. Correct. Correct, right? Okay, so was there an issue when all the Europeans immigrated to America and took over the issue of our client and they were also low skill labor from Mexico? They couldn't come over here to keep the They fought famine, they brought in those. So was that immigration a problem too? Because that is. Ultimately, ended up shaping all the You're not applying you're not the job. Job. You're not, you're not, you have a problem with that immigration. I wasn't alive. I no, no, no. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. You're giving out the You're giving your opinion. You're giving your opinion. You're stating all these historical facts and all of this. Correct. So you're allowed to have an opinion on the past. So if, yeah. if this is mass migration or mass immigration is a problem and it's causing all these border, you know, economical problems because of low skill labor and all of that, was the mass immigration to America? by European Americans a problem also because yeah, they it was also a problem had... for the Native Americans yeah okay so why what's the difference well well here I'll tell you the difference it's fascinating you ask that you're comparing mass immigration to an invasion you're comparing mass immigration to colonization okay. understand the point and, you're making you're essentially saying that I don't things. want to be colonized we didn't want to be colonized well, well, who you would you be in Africa, Africa. Okay, my oh, I've never been to Africa, Africa. Well, my, you know, your ancestors, on the your ancestors, your ancestors. my ancestors didn't want to be colonized so what, so what is your feeling different than their I, I'm against colonization okay so but you're not answering my question though. is this mass immigration that's a problem was there a problem Hey. Yeah, yeah. Say, Colonization was, was a disaster. Okay, so you're, so you're upset. With so if that was a disaster, well, my ancestors didn't colonize. My ancestors, my ancestors mean, were uh, they no, came from Italy in the turn of the century. But they still migrated. Italians migrated. Correct. Also. So is yeah, that and in the 20th also? century. So yeah, so is that a no, no, of course not. Italians are the greatest people in the world. Wait, Italians that's not okay. It's a fact. 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 We have the Roman Empire. We have Rome and the church. You want to talk about the Roman Empire. Let's talk about how the Romans were able to introduce pederasty, pedagogy, and pedophilia. Is that correct? Use the word pedophilia. No, no, I'm Catholic. I'm Catholic. Okay, and it's the Roman Catholics who are out here. Excuse me. There's a fact. Yeah, that's a lot of slander. Excuse me, you said your, your ancestors were immigrants? Correct. So you don't want immigration, but your ancestors were immigrants? Right, well, it's contextual. It's How? contextual. Oh, because in the 20th century. Well, here, here, I'll, I'll explain why. I'll explain the difference. In, in the 20th century, we were industrial, so we needed low skilled workers. We are de industrializing, so we need less low skilled workers. How are we de industrializing when you said jobs are going to be. If mass immigration is such a problem, why are white predominantly business? 
also hiring and having people come over from Mexico to work with them. But it's a good, but it's a big ass problem. But you guys are literally against it. But that's what you guys are doing behind closed doors. Who's we? Who's I'm not in big business. I'm not in big business. Okay. White people. You tell me. You tell me. Are you all the same? I asked a question. Can you answer? Yeah, I can answer. I can answer. We are against those people that are doing that. The people that passed the Immigration Act in '65 and 1990 were white, and they're they are traitors to their country for doing that. We are against them. The reason big business brings over immigration is to cut their labor costs. That's something that hurts the worker. That's something that hurts the country. So that's that's so, a class. Thing. So is, it, is the problem really immigration or the fact that this bi big businesses are taking advantage of people willing to do that work? You're right. You're right. Big business is the, the core. I'm not blaming the immigrants. I'm blaming big business. Okay, but your speech was about immigration. Yeah, immigration, immigration is the problem, problem, but the cause of this is big business. But why didn't so you mention that at all in your speech? I was going to, but we had to cut some corners because there was a lot of unruliness. I was going to draw on the whiteboard a supply and demand curve to illustrate why this is happening, but we don't have that right now. I appreciate it. Um, so, in the beginning of your speech, you were talking about how there's a deficit. I learned about that in college. How I is learned that, about like, our fault? I know what I'm saying. Out of college. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 So, is your problem with yeah. yeah. immigrants? Is your problem with yeah. 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 Who is your problem with That's a great question. That's a great question. That's the most important question. My, I do not have beef with immigrants. I think immigrants are. I don't have beef. Yeah, I don't have a problem with immigrants. I don't think, in other words, I don't think the immigrants themselves are to blame. If I were in Mexico today, who could blame me for trying to come to America to, to try for a better life? It's not their fault. The fault is of our leaders, the fault is of big business who's making all this happen for their problem. I do. I absolutely do. Because it's seat back, he said. I did vote for Trump. He has betrayed his base on this issue. Yes, absolutely. Everyone's, what's that? Why do you say that? Because he campaigned on cutting, cutting legal immigration in half, basically, protecting American workers, shutting down H-1B visas. And now he's talking about expanding H-2B visas and bringing in more legal immigrants than ever. So he did a complete 180. And, and I'll say again, if you care about... Uh, African American. Get out! Get out! Get out! That's so charming. Get out! Get out! So, get if, yeah, if you care about African Americans in the country, get the number one group that is hurt by immigration is African Americans. Why do you say that though? Because you're. Well, here, I'll give you an a priori fact is they're competing for the same jobs. They're competing for the same jobs. And the numbers I'm giving you, I have many friends, well, I can't say, but I have friends in the administration who work in the Commerce Department, other places, and they all tell me the same statistics that it is killing African American Who are your workers. friends? So, I can't say. Wait, why can't you say your friends? So because I don't want to. I don't want to get them in trouble. So how would they get in trouble? Oh, I, I'm telling you, they're, they're competing for the same job. For example, if an illegal immigrant comes into the country, an illegal immigrant is a good example because they can take a wage that's lower than the minimum wage. So an employer would rather hire an illegal immigrant, say, for example, for $5 an hour because it's illegal and under the table for hiring an African American for $50 an hour. Why can't it be all races? Why is it specifically Well, I mean, it is. Ultimately, 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 it does hurt all low skilled workers, but exactly. it tends to be African Americans who African predominantly are competing for the same job. So you also think that the, the European Americans should be allowed to be able to Correct, correct. correct. No, immigrants. no immigrants. My question to you is, yeah, why do you feel as if European should be completely Thank you. Well, I, everybody that's not white in Europe right now should leave. Why is that? Well, I think it is uh, the right of all people to have self-determination. I think every, if you look at the whole world, every other people has the right of self-determination. Chinese people have China. Thai people have Thailand and Indian people have India. Pakis, Pakis have Pakistan. You know, when we look at mass migration, it's happening in every European country. In every European country, they're trying to make Europeans a minority. And so, should there be a single country where white people can be allowed to express their own culture? What's your culture? I just want to know what your culture is. Our culture? Oh, it's a little thing called Shakespeare, Mozart, you know, things of this nature. That's our culture. 
sure we can. Why can we not? So we're not allowed to shake the air. You can say it's our culture in the same way. In the same way that I can listen to the podcast. Right, so does that mean y'all shouldn't get part of that culture? If he's saying he's all We can't take responsibility for it. No, absolutely not. I agree. I agree with that. So he's not that shit specifically. He doesn't have a culture brethren. My white brothers. Yes, exactly. That's what they're appropriating. But my question was, if they should have an all-white, like European or whatever, does that mean all the white people everywhere else should take their ass? Maybe. Perhaps that might have to happen. No, not perhaps. This is a yes or no question. I'm saying, well, I mean, look. No, you're, you gave your opinion. You wanted all the white people to be in Europe. Yeah. So does that mean all the white people in Africa and here and all these other places we live, they need to take their ass home too? Well, I don't know if they would have to. But, but you're uh, saying that we should say. Should I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Should say, though. We'll have, have to see. We'll have to see. But yes or no Sorry, I didn't see that. Yes, they should go. They should all go back to Europe. That's where the white people okay. call you guys. No, 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 no. And here's why. Here's why. Because white people are not a threat demographically. I just want to say, Iowa State does not stand for your values. You are at Unite the Right. True. You have said multiculturalism is a cancer. Correct. You said oh. Oh, you called for the death of all globalists. Well, I'm, I said they should be tried in the case of treason, which is different. Well, I'm just here to say you're not what Iowa State stands for. True. It is evident here that this is not what our university stands for, True. and they do not stand for you. True. And I just yeah, your, give your up. university is paused. And, uh, Wait, yeah. say, explain right. that. What, what paused? Is yeah, what is paused? Yes. Well, this is sort of a meme, but in, uh, in Twitter we say that something is paused because it has, it has been infected with the globalist yeah. agenda. Yeah. Test Wait, positive yeah. for yeah. the virus yeah. of globalism. Wait. That's just, okay. that's just, no, that's just code I'm, for I'm, you I'm, for I'm, Jews. I don't know who her dad is. Are you kidding me? I don't know the question. That's not all something. Sure. Wait, he's 100% African American. Okay. Can I just say? All right, she got a question. No, I care about what you're saying. He's using us for his publicity. Right now, all we're doing is giving this man a platform. That's what we're doing right now. It's true. If you guys walk away right now, I promise you, his voice will not be heard. You're right. That's you're all right. he wants right now. You're right. But it's also, it's also, he doesn't Yeah, yeah that's funny. That's funny. Because at this point in time, where did the, where this my young friend shit's not going to He's right here. understand his point of view and see where he's coming from, we have to have conversations. We have to have this conversation. It has to happen. can't just leave the elephant in the room. No, yeah, it's right. gone on too long and people don't understand. But my question to you is, yeah. do you think globalization is actually an enemy? Yes. In what, in what way is globalization an enemy? Globalization is destroying local cultures everywhere. In, how, in what way, though? Sure. Well, I'll give you a great example. I uh, went to Arlington, Virginia recently. And if you go around Arlington, Virginia, if you walk down the streets, you'll find that you can't really tell you're in Arlington. The architecture, no, no problem, no problem. local culture, it doesn't feel like Virginia used to feel. So what did Virginia used to feel like? I have a question yeah, It used to look like uh, English, like an English Protestant settlement. And, and look, it's happening all over the... All all of the world this is happening too it's not just in the united states the globalization is destroying local cultures it's happening everywhere i have a question i have a question nick i have a question i have a question have a question. Have a question. Have a two more questions you sound okay we'll do a couple we'll do two more questions i have a question okay i have a question no you just made a comment you said charlottesville was fun i said charlottesville did i say charlottesville was fun i didn't hear what you said i said charlottesville was rough i said it was rough he said it was a rough time i have a question for you okay so so you you said you feel like like a good thing, a good idea for white Europeans to a thing for them to do yes. would be to create their own country. Yeah. Well, okay. I think they already exist. France. For, for okay. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, 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 so you want to deport people, but that's not creating your own country. In Europe, in Europe, we should deport. Okay. People. Thank you, but. You're saying white Europeans should create their own country. Well, I mean, well. But okay. those were your exact words, so sure. I'm asking. Yeah, so I misspoke. Okay, I misspoke okay. And then. so then my other question is for you specifically: <laughs> yeah. is um, all the countries in Europe have very different cultures? Correct. And so you're saying for wh white cultures in Europe to thrive, they need to deport people, correct? Correct. So what happens when people with multiple cultural backgrounds come together in Europe? In those places, where did they go? Because for an example of this would be, you yourself said you are one point one to two percent African, Correct. and however much percent native. Mm -hmm. So when people 
who claim the, these small percentages of non-white cultures, what happens to them? I would say that probably you would do something like everyone who came there in a given amount of time would have to go. So how would you how would you be able to um, yeah how would you be able well, to there's documentation to tell? for this? There's okay. documentation for when people have you know their answers. And so would the so wouldn't would so because there's a lot of times that things like that happen where they'll say oh this is these specific yeah. rules but they're not they're broken they're not yeah. followed how would you make sure those rules are enforced well, and, I don't know and I'm, not a, I'm not a governor of a European okay country. so why are you saying why are you giving these well, ideas I'm, out without having a I don't have a logistical plan for you know every okay. house we're gonna go so to. so you don't have a logistical idea is what you're telling you, me we don't have a logistical plan all the way through but, but this so, is what so without come without the logistical plan for such a large-scale thing it's not an idea that's just not true and that's ridiculous what you're saying is ridiculous no it's not it because is. how do you how do but you plan we'll to, on we're going to take one more question how do you plan on excuse me hold on no, hold on no, because you question. want me don't to be respectful to you no you want me to be respectful to you but you refuse you refuse to let me finish speaking before interrupting because we have to move on no we do not we don't have to move on because you you can't answer a question i haven't finished talking you can't answer the question I haven't I have finished asking. Question. You can't answer the I question I haven't. Question. Thank you. So you can't answer something I haven't finished saying because you keep interrupting me. You want me to respect you, but you are not giving me that respect. If you want me to yeah, sit here and not be, oh. if you want me to sit here and not be disrespectful, I need you to respect me myself. Because you keep, you keep being, you keep being, you keep being, you keep being this is this Oh, no, you did not. I did, actually. Okay, well, I just... Hey, 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 stop gassing him, bro. Y'all really is... Stop gassing him. Like, I just you can't be ignorant. He's literally not going to listen to nothing y'all are saying. He's going to validate anything y'all say. So it's really pointless. Us standing around, gathering, like... I'm going to cut, I'm cut the stream like, right now. You're gassing. Y'all know you're gassing. 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 You're g